Welcome to Metaphysical Soul Speak. I'm your host, Elena Fox Starks. Oh my gosh, you guys, I am so sorry that I was not able to do my show last night. I got to the hostel and the internet went out for five hours and I fell asleep because I had been in a bus overnight from 11 in, at night till 9 in the morning, well, 8 in the morning. And then we went out to breakfast, and then we went to the um, the Edificio de, la, de las Oficinas, <laughs> the building of the offices, de uh, Migración, basically immigration. <laughs> I'm not going to go through the whole name. It's like super long. It's like five other words. But um, we went ahead, and we went to our appointment, and they gave us our visas, guys. I am now a temporary <laughs> resident of Ecuador. And what this means is my son and I have two more years to live in this country. We're in Quito, Ecuador right now. You can tell we are in a cafe. It's uh, Abuelita Esther Cafe. It means Grandma Esther, Little Grandma Esther Cafe. <laughs> and it's a really adorable place. It's very clean and simple with extremely, like, 20-foot ceilings. But this is a place for breakfast to make crepes. They make crepes and really amazing breakfast. And we just deserved a nice cappuccino after what we've been through. Um, we we uh, had a, an amazing day. I'm going to just tell you about our day yesterday and all the crazy spiritual things that happened. But before I get into that, that's pretty much what my show about yesterday will be. I will make, I'm going to try my best to make a new show tonight. So I'm going to make it up to you guys, I promise. I'm sorry I wasn't there for your morning commute. Several of you used my show for your morning commute. I'm sorry I wasn't, be, wasn't able to be there for you. I wanted to be able to be there for you, but again, I couldn't do it. Uh, it's just a lot of it is just when the internet is sketchy, and who knows what's going to be happening with the plasma waves coming in, and and um, hopefully we won't be hit by a coronal mass ejection anytime soon from the sun. But if we are, then you know, be prepared for that. You can always listen to my old episodes that you have downloaded, hopefully on Spotify or any of your favorite podcast platforms. All right, guys, I'm going to get right into A Course in Miracles, Lesson 34. This is from yesterday, so again, if you really are serious and want to get into doing your own uh, study of A Course in Miracles, you're going to have to go to acim.org and read your own lessons and really do the work for yourself. But I'm just going to give you a little primer every day and just read through them because the energy of these, it's very, very high. It's muy buena energía. It's very, very good um, energy. And it's a high vibration, and we like the high vibrations, especially in this time when we're trying to transform and ascend as a whole in all of humanity. So we have to be the way showers <laughs> and the way goers and all that. So lesson 34 uh, from yesterday is I could see peace instead of this. Again, it is I could see peace instead of this. The idea for today begins to describe the conditions that prevail in the other way of seeing. Peace of mind is clearly an internal matter, and it must begin with your own thoughts and then extend outward. It's from your peace of mind that a peaceful perception of the world arises. You could say, I could see peace in this situation instead of what I now see in it. If the inroads on your peace of your mind take the form of more generalized adverse... <laughs> Emotions such as depression, anxiety, or worry use the idea in its original form. So, for example, they say, I can replace my feelings of depression, anxiety, or worry for my thoughts about the situation, personality, or event with peace. So, muchísimas gracias. So, basically, we'll get back to the main idea is I could see peace instead of this. So that is for The Course in Miracles from yesterday. Again, when I do my show later tonight, we're going to go back to Lesson 35, and we will continue on our journey, hopefully, inshallah, ojalá, on our daily journey, as God wills it. We will go back to 
<laughs> get back on track and do a daily show. Darn it. Okay, so for today is the 13th. I'm going to read the 13th um, Schumann Resonance later. But right now I'm going to read the 12th Schumann Resonance. I didn't even read it for myself. So yesterday's energy was... Today's activity resulted in a series of six increasing peaks that took place over a period of about 10 hours, from 4 UTC time to 14 UTC time, with a rhythm of about one hour and a half between one and the other. Well, that's rather interesting, isn't it? Uh, amplitudes range from 12 hertz of the first to 38 hertz of the last and the most powerful. All right, guys, so we weren't too terribly high up on the uh, Schumann Resonance. We we're getting little boosts, little teeny tiny boosts up, lifts up, but not really quite in the fifth dimension. So I'm going to go ahead and read the rest of this for later in my next episode. I will be putting out two episodes because I promised you guys one a day. Now I'm playing catch up. I'm playing makeup. I'm so, so sorry for this, you guys. I'm going to ask my higher guidance now. I'd like to connect to my higher guidance. Am I connected? Yes, I am. Uh, what is the Ascension Symptom Scale today? yesterday? Was it 98? Yes. I'm getting 98 for yesterday, so we might have come down by one from the day before. Did you guys uh, feel it? I know I was feeling a lot of energy and a lot of plasma waves yesterday, and I did sleep on the bus a lot, and yet I was exhausted when I got off the bus. I feel that's also a big part of some of the stuff that we've been feeling. I wanted to at least get this episode out for you. Commuters, I know that you use this to... Uh, get away from your road rage and so that's why I'm at least doing a little episode get a little dose of metaphysical soul speak for your journey home my apologies to you guys who use my show to fall asleep at night because of my soothing soothing voice <laughs> and the fact that I have a lot of jokes and it kind of makes you relax and so I wanted to apologize again. I feel really bad about it, but I told you, I warned you, there might have been a possibility that I wasn't going to get my podcast out yesterday. And so this is me <laughs> in an attempt to play catch up. And well, there you have it. All right, I'm going to be right back after this message. This is going to be a shorter show than usual, but I'm just going to tell you about my day and kindnesses along the way. Um, this has been a journey of peace, but a lot of funny things have happened yesterday. And so I wanted to at least express some of the things, you know, we're really grateful that we went through what we did. And there's a lot of uh, synchronicities and coincidences that have been happening, too. <laughs> so we're going to go over that right after this message. If you're listening to this, you obviously like podcasts and you probably like music too. Long walks on the beach, romantic dancing under the stars and oh wait, we're not doing that right now. <laughs> on Spotify, you can listen to all of that in one place for free and you don't even need a premium account, which is cool. Free is always good. Spotify has a huge catalog of podcasts on every topic, including the one you're listening to right now. On Spotify, you can follow your favorite podcasts so you never miss an episode. Download episodes to listen to offline wherever you are, including your long romantic walks on the beach. Also, one, one thing I love about Spotify is that you can easily share what you're listening to with your friends via Spotify's integrations with the social platforms like Instagram. So that makes it really, really versatile. Just search for Metaphysical Soul Speak on the Spotify app or browse podcasts in the Your Library tab. And follow me, of course, don't forget, so that you'll never again miss an episode of Metaphysical Soul Speak. Spotify is the world's leading music streaming service, and now it can be your go-to for podcasts, too. 
Thank you guys so much for supporting Metaphysical Soul Speak on Spotify. All right, guys. So I'm just going to tell you a couple of the weird stories and things and synchronicities that happened yesterday um, during our adventures going to Quito. We um, were going to... uh, you know, we're on the bus, and we were supposed to leave at 1030, and nothing was <laughs> nothing was the way it was supposed to be. I went to get my copy downtown. It was all I needed to do is get one piece of paper copied and leave. And I decided, well, I was going to wait for my son. He was 20 minutes away from the store. So I went to a place next door, and I found an amazing red coral bracelet. I've been wanting a red coral bracelet for a very long time because of the energy and it's good for business and it's good for health and it's just a good energy in in general and red is not normally my color but I've been wanting this for like maybe six or seven years and I just happened to see the exact perfect one and it also has um, a horseshoe on it and my son was born in the year of the horse and it means luck and who needs more luck than someone who's about to go to a migration office to see whether or not they have been accepted <laughs> for a uh, residency, a visa. So I went ahead and bought this. And I bought oh, a couple other things, and he gave me free incense. It was really amazing. So I made a new friend. I was super happy. He wished me luck. So we had all this great energy and, and basically good juju going into this, okay? And so, but my son was supposed to come home at a certain hour, and we ordered food, and then everything got kind of crunched, and my son got nervous, and he couldn't eat, so he put his food in the fridge thinking he'd take it, so he left it, so when I get home, I have food to throw out, but we didn't get to the bus station until like 11 o'clock, and we were supposed to be there, well, we were there at 11.15, and our bus left five minutes after we got there so we got there again just like last time just in time so that was the first thing and while I'm, I'm getting my ticket ready to give to the man I realized we are on bus number 33 now what have I been telling you guys this last week has been about 37 73 33 333 44 and 44 Four, as well as some people have been having synchronicities with the number 144 as well. So if you look up on your Angel Numbers app, you'll see these numbers and what their meanings are. And it's been really crazy with the numbers. Also, 222 has been coming up quite a bit the last few days. And 1111 has come up several times, as well as the number 111. So I'm still here in the Abuelita Esther Cafe in Quito. Um, it's a really nice atmosphere. It's very sweet and very relaxed. Um, they say muy relajante en español. For those of you who are trying to learn English, I mean, in Spanish with me. <laughs> and I've had, now I'm having my second cup of of latte. It's excellent. <laughs> it's excellent. I love it. It's so strong, though. So much caffeine. I think I'm going to be talking faster than normal. <laughs> so I hope you guys can keep up. <laughs> so anyway, so we get to um, we get to the bus stop and everything was great. And I pet a couple dogs and you know how I do in the bus station. You know me and my stray dog thing. I have to go make sure all the boys are okay and give them energy and everything. So everything was wonderful. We actually had a really good time and we found. Across the street from the uh, migration office, we found a cafe. They played all American music. It was really, really amazing. And the breakfast was phenomenal for, like, really cheap, like $2.50 or $3. And I think when you get the extra, like, things, my son had literally had steak and eggs and a lot of vegetables, like a salad and a vegetables mixed in with the steak. I mean... This is breakfast in Ecuador. It's hearty and amazing, and it's very healthy food. And we had um, fruit. Everywhere you go, you get offered fruit juice, which is water blended with the fruit in a blender right as you ask for it. It's not juice that was, you know, made three weeks ago and put in a carton and stored in a refrigerator. It's all fresh. Everything in Ecuador is amazing and fresh. And we... um, we feel very healthy living here. This is a beautiful country. So we are very excited about coming to um, 
to the migration office because now we've met several people there and now they know us and they're happy to know us and so we um you know, we look forward to it. So we went over there, and there were so many people, so many people, so much more than before. And we were just, I mean, we waited for hours. We were there four to six hours, just most of the time waiting. Four hours, I think, it took to see the person. And it was really easy. And, and when I got there, I thought it was $400 for a visa each. It turned out to be 200 for my son. He was half price because he's under 18. Oh, my God. I was so grateful for that. Makes up a little bit for the multa I had to pay last time. <laughs> so now I am not an illegal alien any longer. I am now actually a resident. Thank you, God. So, which I mentioned earlier. So, oh, this has been the longest journey. So we were there. We did all that. We met a man from... Well, I have a friend in Uganda, and this is the first synchronicity, maybe the second synchronicity. I guess it'd be the third if you count the bracelet. So the third synchronicity was um, I had just been talking to my friend in Uganda, and I've been writing a screenplay and working with him and trying to develop a screenplay to maybe sell um, for a movie. And this uh, screenplay is um, it's about it's going to be about two men who fall in love with each other in Uganda in um, the time in which you can be put to death for being gay. So um, we've been developing this storyline and he had just written me maybe 20, 30 minutes before I went to the office. While we're waiting in line, we ended up standing next to a man from, you guessed it, Uganda. In fact, <laughs> when he said he's from Uganda, I said, oh, Uganda, be kidding me. <laughs> He had never heard of that uh, Chelsea Handler show, so he thought that was hilarious, and that made me look brilliant. And then I had to say, well, it wasn't my writing. I don't steal jokes from other comedians. You guys know that. I might repeat them, but then I always try to give proper credit where it is due. <laughs> um, all right, still on my latte. This is excellent. Excellent copy, though. I'm telling you, it's really good. I'm giving you a little bit of the ASMR experience today with... <laughs> the spoons in the background sounds of this place and this is a really beautiful um, beautiful place to be so anyway I hope you appreciate <laughs> the, the ASMR part of, of the show today so anyway we get in um, we got everything done and we got in the taxi and we um, were waiting at a light halfway to our hostel when this guy who was, um, he was tall and blonde and had the bluest eyes. It was really like, he looked like he walked off the cover of a magazine, to be honest with you. And he's standing on the corner selling mandarin oranges. And usually when you buy mandarin oranges in a place, you might get 20 oranges. This guy had like 40 or 50 oranges, like... It was two feet long. <laughs> this enormous bag of oranges. I'm like, holy crap, who could eat this many oranges? And then and then he kind of looked at me and he was like like giving me the little flirtatious thing and, and, and I don't know if he's from Venezuela and I thought, well what if he's from Venezuela, you know even if he's not, I need to help this guy out. I just had a feeling so. I it was only one dollar, right? So I bought this two foot long plastic bag full of mandarin oranges and they're really little. And in Ecuador the colors of things are different. When you're in the United States, if fruit has the color green on it, it tends to be um, not ready to eat yet. It's not ripe. And so you have to wait till the green goes away. But in um in Ecuador, the fruit is much different because we have a lot of fruits that are green on purpose. We even have green oranges. <laughs> we should just call them verdes, but no, they're actually oranges. You cut them open, they're orange inside like a normal orange, and they taste really sweet and very good, but they look like they just came off the tree and they were not ripe yet, but they are ripe, see? So in Ecuador, things are a lot different. So these mandarins were like half green and half orange, and they're very, very sweet. But um, anyway, so we bought the bag of oranges, and the guy was super seductive. And I went to pay him, and he, and he touched my hand with like both of his hands, and he was just like telling me his name was Anthony and that Antonio, and then he was saying that he um, 
wanted my name and where am I from and where am I going and I was just like the light just turned green this is insane <laughs> this gorgeous man selling oranges and I had to leave him forever <laughs> and he looked at me like I just it was like he gave me a look like out of straight out of a telenovela right it was just like <laughs> you're leaving me forever and breaking my heart kind of look and it was crazy and I was like that is one of the most insane things that I've ever seen and <laughs> it was just it's something that stuck with me so I have my bag of oranges I've got two backpacks with me I'm holding on to my sweater because it's too hot to wear it my son has his backpack and so we have all of our stuff and we in this lady kept driving around and around and around the city she couldn't quite figure out where the hell to go even though I gave her the exact address and then she drove past our hostel and I said that's our hostel right there we have to stop there we have to stop there she goes where 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 and then so she goes two more blocks and then drops us off and asked me for ten dollars but the fare was six so I just said, you know what? You didn't even take me. Now I've got to drive two, or I've got to walk two blocks of all this crap in a two foot long bag of oranges. <laughs> so we were like, you know what? This is ridiculous. This is ridiculous. And so what happened was we had to, I just looked down, another synchronicity, 11, 11 minutes in. <laughs> so we went to this park where she dropped us off and and we were just saying you know maybe we're going to share the oranges with all the people in the hostel because that would be super super nice right that's a kindness that's a compassion when you give you know you 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 walk into a place and you give free oranges people are going to be like oh wow and you bring more joy into the world so what have you guys done in your life to bring more joy into the world think about this this is kind of fun my son likes to get big bags of these lollipops that are the, the the flavor is called mora, which is the uh, Spanish word for blackberry. So uh, he gives out these uh, lollipops called plop, <laughs> and I call them lollipop plop, and they're mora. <laughs> or blackberry flavored. Well, my son likes to buy these giant bags of them and then he gives them out to people as he's walking down the street to bring more joy into the world. And this is an idea that we got from our friend, um, his name is Twatrick and he's from uh, Bristol in England. And um, he is a very fun and amazing human being and someday I, I probably will read his book called The Big Book of Boop. <laughs> and when you hear what boop is, you're going to be so, so happy. In fact, you know what, guys? I think I'm going to read the big book of boop to you guys tonight. That's what my show, I just, just decided that's the show for tonight. We're going to read from the big book, book of boop from Twatrick. Because <laughs> you're going to love this book. This book is phenomenal. And I'm going to tell you how to get a hold of your book uh, if you want to read it for yourself because the artwork he is a professional artist and he's gone all over the world doing his art and I just want to promote him he's a good good friend of mine he is my old roommate from Guatemala <laughs> he and I live together in what is called the round house it is the only house that is round and the only house made of wood in the whole of San Marcos La Laguna and Lago Atitlan Guatemala in the Lake Atitlan, Guatemala. And so when I write my book and put it out there about my funny stories and adventures, you guys are going to hear a lot more about my friend, <laughs> Twat Trick. <laughs> he calls himself that because he wants people to swear every time they say his name. <laughs> You know how funny the crazy people from Bristol are, and you know how, pe how people can be from, <laughs> from, uh, <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, <laughs> all right, we're not going to get back into that, okay, so, <laughs> he's a fun person, and you're going to love what his crazy philosophy is, and it makes a lot of sense in his crazy confusion and happiness, but Trotrick gave my son and I this idea of when you go out into the world and you give people free stuff, um, out of nowhere, they just respond and they're like, oh, and it brings more love and kindness to their hearts and it makes them want to pay it forward. Everybody needs to pay it forward. And if you do this, this will bring more joy, kindness, and we will go up, 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 mas arriba, 
for the fifth dimension, higher and higher and higher, for la dimension quinta. <laughs> But for, that's for my friends in Brasilia. I have more fans in Brazil now. So, uh, gracias, grazie. Thank you for being in my listening audience and for listening. I'm so happy to have you. Um, I have recently, last week, by the way, wanted to mention real quick before I get into the next part of the story. Um, I was listed in the top few slots, I think in the top 10, on iTunes in the Netherlands. I don't know why or how, but welcome, welcome if you're here listening to me from the Netherlands and also from Norway. Norway was the other place in which I had reached on the charts in iTunes. <laughs> I've been so that also so that brings us to I think four countries I've been on iTunes in the charts. <laughs> so my podcast is growing and I wanted to thank you guys for helping me grow the podcast more. So yay. So anyway, we get to the we get to the square and it's covered in pigeons and it's covered in kids. <laughs> there's kids everywhere, there's pigeons everywhere, the sun is so bright. I'm getting sunburned. We're trying to finagle all of our bags. We have to figure out how to walk to the hospital with all of our stuff. And all of a sudden, my son says, well, my son says, you know, mom, let me help you. You know, it's too much stuff. We're at a super high elevation. It's hard for you to breathe. I, you know, you have asthma and I want you to, you know, I want to help you. I'm like, okay, great. So he says, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to just, you know, grab, you know, either your bag or the oranges. Like, well, you know what? I'll take my bags, honey. Why don't you take the oranges? <laughs> this was the mistake I made, telling him he should take the mandarins. I should hand it in the bag, but this is what happened. I handed my son, this is like right out of a movie, I swear to God. I, I handed him the bag of mandarins and... Immediately, and he didn't even do anything. Remember, I told you guys we have hereditary magic, and sometimes things around my son just happen to break. They break. This thing broke. It broke, and oranges went everywhere. Teeny tiny round mandarin oranges. They were orange with green, like a lime green color, and bright orange in every frickin' direction. <laughs> These mandarins went everywhere in every direction. And then the pigeons flew up. So at the same time that the mandarins, imagine this, okay, we're in a gray, the, the, okay, we're on, uh, the, the, the floor or the ground is tiles. Very ancient, hundreds of years old tiles. We're in front of a hundreds, probably a 500 year old church. And the church is white and gray and the tiles are gray. And the pigeons are gray and white, and everything is all, like, it looked like a black and white photograph, okay? You know, there's, like, no color except for the people standing there who have bright colored sweaters on, these little kids, these little girls who are playing. And they were running around, and the pigeons were, you know, chasing, they're all chasing each other. Then we dropped the oranges, and in every direction, orange, little balls of orange in, from us in every single stinking direction. Yeah, like in front of us, behind us, to the right, to the left. It was like pandemonium. And then all of a sudden, all of the birds flew up into the air. And so there's pigeons. There's like thousands of pigeons and, and, and you know, dozens of oranges. And then all these little kids. And then my son started going, you know, mandarinas, gratis, mandarinas, gratis, gratis, mandarinas. You know, like free oranges, free oranges, oranges for free. Because we started freaking out. There's no way we have room in our pockets, in our, in our backpacks to... We have no room in our backpacks to put the oranges. What are we going to do? Holy shit, we just... It's just littered all over. The minute we get to Quito, there's oranges everywhere. What are we going to do? And so immediately, in, in like two seconds, up out of it was like a scene out of a movie. An angry cop, <laughs> an angry policeman on a motorcycle comes up, and he says... You know, he starts asking, of course, in Spanish, okay? And he's like, what's happening here? What did you do? What's happening? And it's like, and I, I, I was so angry. I'm like, isn't it obvious? We broke a bag of oranges. It's no big deal. We're fixing it. We're fixing it. We're giving the oranges away to free to people. It's okay. And he got really upset, and he goes, okay, fine. And he, 
not, and he, he like came up off the road onto the sidewalk into the plaza square where you're not supposed to drive a motorcycle. Why was a policeman on a motorcycle in the middle of a park? I mean, it was literally out of a scene, like out of a movie. Como un película. I can't believe it. it was just like a movie. And so, <laughs> so we started handing the oranges, and then um, all these kids came and adults came, and everyone started laughing, and they were so happy and filled with joy <laughs> because it was such a funny scene. These gringos are dropping mandarinas everywhere, and so they came. Everyone got oranges, and we still had for us like 30 or 40 left. That's how big the bag was. It was huge. And so we gave them out and then we had we had all of the oranges contained. Finally everything is fine. Well, only one out of the whole bag broke. We threw that one away. And then all of a sudden three little girls came up and said, do you have any more oranges left? And we said yes. And I had everything was contained except for the three oranges that I could not fit in my bag. And I'm like, oh, that's so perfect. So I gave these little girls my three oranges and then my bag was able, the zipper was able to zip up. We thought we better get out of here before other people start bombarding us, asking us for more oranges. Because we wanted some for ourselves. We got back to the hostel. We ate, oh, I don't know, 10 or 12 oranges each. And we now still have about 12 left. So, I mean, <laughs> that's how many oranges there were, guys, for one dollar. One dollar, solamente, un dollar. I can't believe it was only one dollar. So... Anyway, we were walking then later to um, walking then later down the street, and we were making fun of. Um, we saw these keychains, and one of them had a little tiny flask, and another one was a little brass knuckles. And there's no way that a person can use these brass knuckles, so why would you need that as a keychain? It would never be useful or helpful. And so we started laughing about it. The flask was like one shot of whiskey or one shot of rum, you know, whatever you would drink. And so we were talking to ourselves and laughing about it and just making fun of it. We hadn't slept in two days, so we were dang bats. You know, we were being kind of funny. And this man comes up to us and he started saying, you better start talking in Spanish because you're in Ecuador now. And we were like, what? Like, how, what? This is our private conversation. Why are you interrupting us? And he says, you're in Ecuador. You have to speak Spanish. So we start speaking to Spanish speaking to him in Spanish, and then he asked if we were a pareja. Like, pareja? No. ¿Por qué no? Él es mi hijo. What is your... You know, like, he's my son. What is your problem? You know, wh why would you think that he's my... No, what? You know, like, you know, eres tan loco. You know, like, you're, you're like, too crazy. Why would you say this to me? You know, and then I told him the joke. Like, hey, you know, look, this is, looks like a brass knuckles for a baby because the fingers have to be so small to use it. And I said, maybe it's for drunk Irish babies when they get the flask. And we were making fun of it. We were, like, just, you know, joking around because we were punch drunk. So the guy kind of got it and kind of didn't get it. His wife started laughing. His daughter started roaring with hilarity. She thought that was hilarious. So I thought, well, I'm going to tell him one more joke, which confused the hell out of him. Here in Ecuador, there is a saying, uh, pasas buenas. Pasas buenas is, means... Um, like, you pass well, you go well. We're wishing you well on your journey. We want you to go well. Okay, so, but also the word pasas is the same thing as raisins. That's also how you say uvas secas, pasas. So I so to confuse this man and to see if he would get my humor because you know I'm a comedian you guys know me hey okay shaman <laughs> so this is what I said uvas secas buenas. Pasas buenas. Lo mismo. <laughs> Pero es mi bromeando. I'm joking. This is me. You know, estoy comediana. Conoces me. You know me. I'm a, I'm a comedian, right? So I told him this, and I said, you know, you know, I said this, you know, this is what this means. And he didn't get it, and his daughter was laughing so hard. And then she looked at her mom, and then her mom started laughing, and, and, and they liked the fact that I confused this guy. It looks like this is a person who's always in everyone's business. And he got up in my business, and I confused him. And as a machismo hombre, a man who has this machismo attitude, he didn't take too kindly to it, and he had to immediately go on his way, and it was hilarious. And his, his daughter and his, his his wife were they were so happy that I had done that because they wanted to see him put in his place and well they're not in a position to do that you know what I mean 
<laughs> anyway, I am really, really jiving on this caffeine. There's so much caffeine in this latte. I have like one more sip left and we're, then we're going to wrap this up in about five minutes so that you guys have your afternoon commute at least. At the very least, hopefully you'll have your afternoon commute with metaphysical salt speak. All right. Oh, this excellent latte. Okay. So... Then we went to a restaurant, um, a chifa restaurant, and the word chifa is um, eat. That's the only what's the only thing it means in Chinese. It means eat. So anywhere in Latin America where you see a restaurant that says chifa, it just means eat in Chinese in Mandarin. <laughs> Again with the Mandarin. Here's another synchronicity. I didn't even get it until I got here, <laughs> until I got to this part of the story. <laughs> so we go to eat chifa, which. It's kind of a, it's a combination between um, Chinese food from China because there were many settlers in Peru. Um, many, like over 100 years ago, there were settlers in Peru and several ended up here in Ecuador as well. And now we have um, a great mix of people and the food is really good. Lots of Chinese food, but it's not the Chinese food you would get in the United States or even in China. It is a combination. It's like... They've been doing this for a hundred years, whereas the combination restaurants are gourmet and they're expensive in the United States. It's way, way different, way different. So anyway, it's good food, but it's pretty much very similar from restaurant to restaurant. It's kind of um, not what you would expect, but the man running the restaurant was directly from mainland China, and that was really weird that never usually it's like oh my dad my grandparents my great grandparents moved here but this he's he came here by himself 15 years ago he's been living in Quito from China so that was interesting and he didn't have an opportunity to speak English very much so we were talking and talking and talking and turns out his name is Leon well one letter off of my son's name Liam so that was weird <laughs> and cool and um, he happened to know about Kung Fu and we were talking about going someday to China to learn Kung Fu and we wanted to learn um, you know just different uh, martial arts styles a like Qigong and um, I want to learn Falun Dafa which that is illegal but I was trying to talk to him and, and one thing he told me and it really hit home again this thing idea hit home for me was I, I put my hands together like in prayer you know I said yeah I want to go pray with the Buddhist and he said you're not allowed to do that in China and I'm like what he says you're not allowed to put your hands together in that way when you put your hands together in front of your heart with your fingers pointed up in your in your um hit your palms together like you're going to pray in church or something that is illegal in China because it's a communist country I had no idea so maybe we should all just take a deep breath and be grateful that we can pray and worship and believe in God, the universe, the cosmos or whatever in our own way because you know we, we have the ability we're not in a communist country. We're not in a place where we're going to be told what to do, what to think, what not to do, what not to think. So take a deep breath and be grateful right now. <laughs> Just take a deep breath. <sighs> All right. And be grateful because we are in a place where we can have our spirituality the way we want it. So... We left the Chinese restaurant last night, and we're going along, walking down the street, and there's this little dog, this little dog, and she was so beautiful. She was a little redhead dog with, whites, with white on her fur, and right on top of her head, here's a really fun one. There was, she had a white heart of fur. Her fur shaped like exactly like a white heart on her forehead. And she was so adorable. But there was a crazy man in the street, totally crazy, yelling and violent. And like he's going to hit her with his bag. And she ran out into traffic to get away from him. And she was barking and, and, and defending herself 
fiercely and yelling at him back. And he was yelling at her. And they were having this crazy man and this beautiful little dog were having a fight in the middle of the street. And all of these cars were like waiting for this to go by so they don't hit the dog. So I called her over, my son. We called her over. She came to us. And she was shaking and she was so scared. And she had so much uh, timidity, so, so afraid. And so we had to, we both laid hands on her and gave her energy and gave her love and then we were able to calm her down and we helped her so that was a really fun another another weird coincidence or you know this happened to be that we have the energy and the ability to help her and at the same time it happened at the same time we were there so it was a synchronicity not a coincidence because it was it was just good timing good timing is kind of what a synchronicity is so you know, it was, it was pretty much that. That's pretty much how our day went. It was like one little thing after another where we're helping people, we're bringing joy to people, they're bringing joy to us. It was a beautiful day. It was a good exchange. And for us to be residents in Ecuador for the very first day, that was our very first day. And today we went to this Abuelita Esther Cafe, and we had um, strawberry juice and the best lattes ever, probably the best lattes in the city. So if you ever come to Quito, this is the place to be. But <laughs> And then we get to the hostel, and no, we had nothing. We had nothing, but <laughs> no internet. But we did get to watch TV, and we got to see a Braziliana. And then we saw a Turkish telenovela. They say Turkia, because there were a lot of settlers here in Quito. When the Spaniards left, there were 10,000 slaves from Turkey that were released and they were be they became free because the Spaniards did not have the money to house them on the ships on the way back to Spain. And there was a, a war going on in the Ottoman Empire and they decided, hey, you know what? We might as well stay here and make a life for ourselves instead of go back and get into a war after being slaves. <laughs> Good choice, right? So anyway, there's a lot of Muslim population here and I had never seen a telenovela of Muslims from Turkey who live in Ecuador and the language is Spanish. It blew my mind. <laughs> it was really amazing. So I'm glad I got to see that. I'm glad I'm able to do the show for you guys now. And I'm going to come back later in a couple hours and do a second show for today. And that will make up for yesterday. And again, my apologies. So I wanted to thank you for listening. I'm grateful for each and every one of you. I love you. And if you have any questions, comments, ideas for upcoming episodes, or anything at all you wish to discuss with me, um, please feel free to write me at metaphysicalsoulspeak at gmail.com. If you want to send me any voice messages um, that I could play on the air, if you say private, you don't have to be played on the air, and I won't, and I will respect your wishes. But if you want to be on the air and say comment or something, that would might be fun, too, for us to hear from you. Maybe the rest of us want to hear what you have to say. You could share your joy, your love, your energy, and what you've got now to Metaphysical Soul Speak. That will be uh, sent to anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical. You have to download the Anchor app, and you have to favorite my podcast. And then you can send me all the voice messages you want. Anyway, I am going to sign off now. They were at 33 minutes, and so this is a shorter episode, but later, hopefully, it'll be a little bit longer. Um... I'll be I'll be back later with all unique uh, programming as usual. But for now, I'm signing off <laughs> with peace and joy and the high vibes of the holy fifth dimension. All right, until next time, guys. Peace. Chances are you've heard of CBD oil, but maybe you're a little afraid it might make you a little high or super drowsy. Possibly you're not going to pass uh, mandatory drug testing at work. Am I right? Well, I found an amazing company. I'm including the link in this episode's description. 
Okay. This is derived from only the hemp plant. It does not contain THC, which is the factor in marijuana that makes you high. This CBD oil has been known to reverse aging, help you through weight loss issues. You will literally lose weight on our products if you want. Also reverses hair loss. It also helps you with things like insomnia, anxiety, pain in your muscles and joints, and it gives you benefits throughout your body with its high quality antioxidants. We even have a vape. Would you like to try the blueberry cheesecake? (laughs) I know I would. I mean, there's so much danger with vaping these days, but not when it is only CBD oil. That's right. You could vape not only anytime you want, because it's not going to make you high, but it's also going to be healthy for you. How's that? Pretty cool, right? Well, go ahead and look in my episode description for my link. And, well, start using your CBD oil today. If you're interested in the business end of it, it's absolutely free to join. It's absolutely free every month, actually. I have never seen a business like this in all my life. So, you can start, well, using your CBD oil and you can start a brand new side hustle for yourself. Hey, (laughs) as in Hey Yoka Shaman approves of this message. I love you guys. And well, here's to your health. Metaphysical Soul Speak is run on sponsors and listener support. This means listeners like you. If you are so inclined to support my efforts and my little podcast, please visit me at anchor.fm forward slash metaphysical and pledge an amount of your choosing today. Thank you.